Rituals are important. I'm sure many of us have certain rituals we practice for a variety of occasions. The first day of school or summer, for holidays or vacations, birthdays or other life events. I'm also guessing that many of us have rituals around meals as well. Just as those table rituals bind our families together, they bind us together when we gather at Christ's table. On this day, World Communion Sunday, it connects us with our Christians and brothers and brothers and sisters around the world as we share this meal that Jesus has prepared for us. Food in general is always important. It provides nourishment, energy, and sustains us. It makes a number of us more pleasant to be around. That hangry thing is real. But oftentimes, the rituals around a meal are just as, if not more important, than what we are eating. Uh, the exception might be a holiday meal. Just try making a change to a traditional holiday menu. These food rituals are part of our family identity, just as sharing communion is part of our Christian identity. Food has significance in scripture. According to the online of version of Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible, there are 230 verses that include the word food, 472 verses that include the word eat, 88 verses that include the word table, 50 verses that reference eating. And this does not include references to specific foods such as manna, fish, lamb, bread, and wine, to name a few. In the story of creation, God ensures that there is a variety of food for the new world, all of which is theirs to eat, well, except for one, the fruit from that little tree of knowledge of good and evil. We know how that ended. In the Exodus, when the Israelites are complaining for lack of food, God provides enough for each day, with extra on the sixth day, so that they do not have to collect food on the Sabbath. Jesus fed a multitude with just five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus also broke a lot of food rules, choosing to dine with people like Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and to ask for water from the Samaritan women. And of course, with the disciples at the Last Supper, where Jesus tells them to continue to have this meal in remembrance of him. God continues to provide even to the water of life and the trees of life in the book of Revelation. And yet, statistics tell us that food insecurity is a significant problem. According to the Food Aid Foundation, 795 million people do not have enough food. That's one in nine people on earth. 12.9% of people in developing countries are undernourished. China is the largest producer, importer, and consumer of food. In terms of calorie count, India is the second most productive but its, product, but its value drops to fourth place as its production is half that, less than half that of China's. In 2017, an estimated one in eight Americans were food insecure, meaning they lack consistent accent to a sufficient amount of food for an active, healthy lifestyle. That equates to 40 million people including 12 million children. The United States is the most efficient producer of food, and yet almost 16% of our households are food insecure. 
For adults only in a household with children, it's 8% and 7.7% of children. And the rates are even higher for African American families. USAID AID is working to help reduce hunger by aiding smaller farmers with help and support to be more successful by creating partnerships and teaching them to have better outcomes, providing education on nutrition, hygiene, and clean water to help mitigate illness and keep children healthier and farmers working, by empowering women teaching people how to better manage their resources, how to prepare for natural disasters, and working to meet immediate needs. Jesus eats his way through the Gospels, making a statement in who it is he associates with, often breaking boundaries along the way Social boundaries when he eats with the ritually, those who are ritually unclean and when he breaks the purity laws. Eating foods that are unclean and forbidden. And let's not forget dining with the Pharisees. As a result, because he chooses to be with those who are outcasts, they seek to be with him because they are accepted as they are. It was a radical concept then. And unfortunately, in many ways, it's still a radical concept today. Don't we all want to be seen and accepted for who we are? At the Last Supper, Jesus gathers the disciples for the Passover meal, the meal that commemorates the freedom of the Israelites from slavery. In the blessing of, then the breaking and sharing of the bread and the cup with each person, the meaning of the action is that each one who eats is a recipient of that blessing. When we come to this table, all who trust in Christ are welcome, regardless of gender, gender identity, level of income, level of education, age, who they love, the color of their skin, or their nationality. A table where all who trust in the Lord are welcome, receive a blessing, and no one leaves with hunger pangs in their soul or thirst in their hearts. Truly this day, People will come from east and west, north and south, to be at table with our Lord. We will speak different languages and eat different types of bread, perhaps have some differences in theology, but together, together we gather in gratitude for all that God has provided. And for that, we have much to be thankful for. Thanks be to God. Amen.